G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the west side of the map, playing as the Chinese. It is Puppy Paw. On the opposite side of the map, playing in the color red as the Mongols, it's Lean Octopus. Watch out for him. He is moving his tentacles down towards this western position. It's still yet to get his town center into a decent spot. Is he going to the water with that? Where is he going, Lean Oct? No, he's not going to the water. He's just going to be bringing it down towards this gold mine. You can see he's got a little bit of a gap in there. Not quite perfect, but you know what? I'll take it. So, welcome, welcome, welcome to game number two in the series between Leenok and Puppy Paw. For anybody unfamiliar with this series, this is part of Golden League, and we are in the knockout stage. We are casting games from the knockout stage that are considered by many to be the best of the best, because that is Golden League, baby. So, for anybody unfamiliar with Golden League, $125,000 tournament that is going to be happening this weekend, next weekend, last weekend, the weekend before, every single weekend for at least quite a while so make sure you check it out even if you're watching this a month from now even if you're watching this on you know may 15th make sure you check out golden league this weekend because it'll still be happening i'm pretty confident it should in fact it should still be happening by then i'm not 100 sure i'd have to double check um <laughs> but uh, make sure you check it out 15 gmt egc tv is where it will be i'll leave a link in the description so you can find it but now lean not going to be harassing or rather getting harassed yeah, and very interesting, I will just say, to see that Leenok is not going to be the one on the Chinese, but rather Poppy Paw. So you guys will know I'm a big fan of the Chinese. I'm a big, big fan of Leenok. Leenok loves to play the Chinese. But today it seems like maybe his Chinese got banned. Maybe he wasn't allowed to play Chinese. But he's going to be going up against Poppy Paw, who is on the Chinese. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this game goes. Because one of the things people are yet to really discover are the Mongol Castle Age timings for docks. And what does that mean? That means that they get access to this bad boy right here, the war junk. And the um, the Chinese also get access to the war junk. The only difference is with the Chinese, uh, you're playing the Chinese, which at the moment, it's not the best sieve. It's not the strongest sieve. Uh, whereas the Mongols, a pretty damn good sieve. They get a lot of great bonuses that are going to help them on the water. Uh, they get things like uh, their improved gold production, which which comes through from their gold. Uh, they're stepped out uh, and so as a result it means that they're able to support a lot more units on water uh, but we have begun to see the water meta beginning to shift because the chinese as well as the mongols used to be considered by many i know this is kind of wild to be pretty decent on water uh, but now we are starting to see the english sort of come out a little bit as well because they have got access to the hulk in h3 but they also get plus one range on their hulk so they are they've, they've got slightly more range than the um, than the other two war junks because the war junks do technically have more range uh, if you take a look at the war junk i mean i, I can't show you it right now but you, you'll have to take my you'll have to trust me uh, I suspect it's, it's it's got a range of 6.5, and the Hulk has got a range of 6, but the English Hulk, with its bonus, has got 7, uh, which actually makes it outrange it. But in this situation, both players are going to be going into war junks, I would suspect. Uh, probably going to be seeing out some very early aggression, because Lee Nock, as you would know, is a very aggressive player. Now, we haven't seen any boar aggros just yet. Now, boar aggro is kind of a funny thing. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this before, but essentially, what can happen? You can aggro this boar on Boulder Bay, to your opponent's gold and get the boar to attack the villagers here. Like, I'm not even kidding you. It's absolutely hilarious when it happens. Uh, but we'll see if it happens uh, because it could happen on the other side of the map as well. Puppy Paw could potentially look to aggro this boar, bring it down to the town center of his opponent. Would probably lose his scout if he did that. Uh, probably not an advisable choice. Uh, but at the same time, Puppy Paw now looking to build up a pretty decent economy on the water. He's got seven fishing boats. Actually, I, I take that back. Did I just cancel that? I swear I just canceled that. Yo, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I clicked on the... Yo, okay, I did cancel it on this UI. I did cancel it, but the fishing boat still came out. You could see it wasn't even producing. Watch this. Magic. It stops producing. It stops producing. It stops. And BDOT coming in right now. BDOT, how you doing, mate? 100 gifted subs coming through from Big BDOT. Welcome, fellas. Welcome, everybody. Thank you very much, BDOT, supporting the channel. For anybody unfamiliar with BDOT, BDOT is a, a big fan of Age of Empires and uh, loves to come and help out the channel. So big shout out to you, BDOT. And uh, now we've got ourselves a bit of a barbican coming down, a BDOT barbican coming down on the front line here. Wow. Plenty, plenty of, uh, of love coming in there from BDOT. Big shout out, mate. Thank you very much. But uh, now Puppy Paw going to be falling back uh, towards his town center. You can see the Imperial official doing absolute work down here. Seven villages on this bad boy. Khan looking to try and find a little bit of action. Not going to be able to be successful today uh, as the dock once again continues to gather up. You can see he's got the six fishing boats out. I'm going to cancel this one. Did I cancel that? 
Nah, I didn't cancel it. It came out. It came out just when you thought I was I was trolling. I wasn't really trolling. Uh, but yeah, Barbican going to be getting up here for Puppy, puppy Paw. And I like the way that the Barbican is, is going to be sitting here. So the Barbican's got a beautiful range on it. You can see he's kind of got it out in a nice spot here as well. The way that it comes out a little bit further. So it's almost like he's gone for a dock in here and like brought the dock back as far as possible. And then got the Barbican sitting out there. It, it, it's a very, it's a pretty, uh, I mean, kind of, kind of, kind of Drongo, kind of. Uh, but uh, great job with another weekend of Golden League casting. Really well done. Thank you, BDOT. I really appreciate it, man. That's, that's really, really kind of you. Uh, glad glad that you enjoyed it. Yeah, it, it was great Golden League this weekend. We had we had so many good adventures. A, a lot of great storylines beginning to develop as well. And I'm, I'm enjoying this puppy paw slash wham storyline that we're starting to see. So th these two guys, these two Canadian brothers just coming out of the woodworks and just, you know, being so impressive. You know, I, I'd never really heard of them before Age of Empires 4, and then all of a sudden, they just take the scene by storm. It's, it's impressive stuff but uh now we see puppy paw very heavily on gold at this point what kind of reaction are we seeing from lee knock lee knock with a double dock opening uh gonna be going into light junk so lee knock not known for getting his junks out typically he's gonna be doing just the light version of it today uh now when it comes to the differences between the light junk and the junk we're about to find out so the light junk a little bit more uh a little bit more effective uh per capita uh than the junk you can see the junk 120 and 90 and then i think we've got 120 and 60 is it no 120 and 90 for the light junk as well Surely these guys don't have the same stats. No, they do not. So Light Junk has got 400 health, 3 armor, and 10 attack. And then the Junk has got 650 attack, 2 armor, and 8 attack. How does that stack up? Let's find out. Because we're going to begin watching these two battle it down in the middle of the map right now. Mono e mono. Who wins? Is it the Junk? Is it the Light Junk? Hey, you stay back right there, Lee Knock. You're not allowed to do that. 2 against 1. That's unfair. Uh, but now, uh, now going to be falling back with the Junk. I guess that settles the score. Light Junk is... Light Junk has got his cousin, so it makes it uh, it makes it so he wins that battle. But now Khan going to be falling back from this situation. Look like he threw a boomerang. Oh my god! Look at the way the arrow moves. It kind of looks like a boomerang. The way if you've seen a boomerang, <laughs> look <laughs> look at the way it goes. Hold on, we're gonna watch this. He's like he kind of like tosses it back, just like ready. Uh, it, it it doesn't have the same effect now. It, it, it looked like it was like wigging out of control like crazy, but not going to be the case today. Look at the, the way the bow moves. Damn it, dude. Khan going to go down though. Unfortunately, Khan losing his life. Double dock here. Still only going to be the case for Lee Nock. Not looking to go for like Beastie Cuties triple dock. We have seen Mongol players go for like a triple dock opening, but look at this. Lee Nock thinking about the castle age. Classic Lee Nock. Exactly what you'd expect. And I've got to hit that button to make sure we change this color back because he is playing as the red Lee Nock. Uh, but uh, we'll take a look back over on the other side. Puppy Paul probably going to be doing the same thing, and indeed he does. Uh, so both players going to be beelining towards that castle age, going to be looking to get their war junks out. So just when you thought it was about junks, just when you thought about it was about light junks, no, it's actually about war junks. Horseman going to be moving around the back of the base, looping around. Now, keep in mind, Lenox going to have all of his resources underneath this town center. There is not a single villager that is threatened right now. He's got 26 villagers all underneath this town center. He's got plenty of fishing boats. You can see 12 fishing boats at the moment. And just a couple of light junks out. But I gotta say, I really like the Barbican play coming through from Puppy Paw. And I, I definitely do think this is the this is the future of Boulder Bay meta. I do think it is the Barbican of the Sun. Because this almost guarantees you that your enemy is not going to be able to push this. And it enables you to get up to the third age. Enables you to get those war junk out. And then you're able to take control of the map. The only real issue that you've got is if you play up against an English person or an English player. Uh, who actually looks to try and counter you. And does so very effectively with their, uh, with their appropriate ships. Uh, but now we see that uh, Double Dock going to be coming out for Puppy Paw. Looking to go up with the next landmark. It is going to be in the back of his base, the Astronomical Clock Tower. Uh, no Song Dynasty coming out just yet for him at this stage. A single stable, as you will be aware. He has got those uh, those horsemen out on the map, providing a little bit of pressure against that Khan. And I think it makes a lot of sense playing up against the Mongols to go for an early stable. Now that I think about it, it j just to deal with the Khan, it makes so much sense. I'm going to start doing that. Every single time I play against the Mongols, I'm going to go for an early stable just to make sure that I can deal with that Khan. And it seems kind of wild that you would do that, but I mean, th there's flexibility in there as well, right? Like you can then take those units and then go and look to harass your enemy. Now a market going to be coming down. Puppy Paw obviously going up with a step redoubt. Going to be dropping that down immediately. Uh, we'll take a look and see what upgrades he's got. Does he have the wheelbarrow upgrade? Indeed he does, as he drops off 15 wood uh, right there. And now we see the junk. Going to be slowly but steadily going down against the light junk. Players looking to exhaust out all these lower class units. The war junks are now on the field. In response, we do see outposts beginning to come up for Lenok as well on the shoreline. Uh, Lenok looking to try and take control of the narrative here a bit. You can see he's still got a lot of good 
uh, fishing economy out here. 14 fishing boats at the moment on the water. Compare that over to his opponent, who's sitting on 10, and he's only on shore fish. So Puppy Paw, not going to be looking as healthy in this game. But now the war junk's beginning to come out. Second war junk out as well for Puppy Paw. Uh, and, uh, and now we begin the battle of the junks, the dance-off. You know you know when you're at, at school and you guys had a dance-off? Well, actually, I'll be honest, that was only ever in, mir in movies. I never, I never went to school. In fact, I, I, when I, if I did go to school, it wouldn't have been to watch that. But is that an Uvu? Lenok hasn't made an Uvu? Wait, Lenok's doing the no Uvu challenge? Lenok was going to go for the, the, the Uvu, but then, <laughs> then Puppy Paw says, hey, mate, you know, you, you're doing the no Uvu challenge. I'm going to enforce it. I'm going to make it so that you can't do the no Uvu challenge. And that's exactly what happens. Lenok now looking uh, looking like he might be in a bit of a concerning position doing that no Uvu challenge. Now back towards his opponent's base. We can see that the, the colors on, a, on the screen have started to tangle, started to intertwine, started to make love with each other. Uh, but now the Khan in the Castle Age. Lenok is going to be doing what he does best, trying to take down that Imperial official Khan going to be able to find some of these units here um, but um, it does fall underneath the town center it's going to be careful it's falling underneath the town center um, and uh, villagers can be jumping in. look at that took out the imperial official that's a huge loss right there 100 food 50 gold that goes down right there that is massive uh, but now a villager moving forward not sure exactly what the intent of this villager was puppy paw going to be coming up short there second villager coming out over here is he going for a proxy? Is Poppy Paw going for a proxy? What are we doing right here, Puppy Paw? And how did you sneak this villager out without your enemy seeing it? That is the real question. Knight going to be coming out, or Lancer going to be coming out, rather, for our Chinese player. In the center of the map, it looks like a lull has begun. We've got five junks. Five junks. Five junk at the moment. Five war junks, at least, uh, for our Chinese player. On the other side of the map, though, only two uh, war junks coming out for Lee Nock at this stage. But now Lancer's looking to come out. It looks like the No Uvu Challenge has finally, uh, finally, finally, finally uh, been been remedied. But it does seem like his opponent is intent on making sure he sticks with the No Uvu Challenge. Uh, because Lee Nock... You guys know, you know, once you once you agree to do the no Uvu challenge, uh, that is it. You got to stick to it. You got to stick to it, Lee Nock. There's no doing the Uvu at 12 minutes, mate. No, no 11 minute Uvus that are going to come through. Lance are going to be able to dive inside that Barbican, getting to safety. And now at the same time on the front, we've got Lee Nock who is continuing to struggle. You can see the little bit of a dance beginning here. Fishing boats need to be trying to heal up these uh, these uh, these war junks. At the same time, they're kind of just sitting idle at the moment. He's going to be losing out all of this fishing economy, trading out one for one. Not a bad trade, to be honest. Puppy Paul going to be going away from the battle with his tail between his legs. And uh, we've got a second barracks now coming down here as well. Spearman going to be the name of the game here. These are, Spearman are only the Dark Age Spearman. Oh, actually, I take that back. Hardened Spearman. They're not quite the Dark Age Spearman, uh, but they are definitely not the fully fledged, fully upgraded veteran Spearman uh, that you would know to come and expect from Puppy Paw in the Castle Age at 12 minutes. Khan got to be careful here. Khan not paying attention. Khan looking to focus down the Spearman, but Khan getting stabbed in the face. Khan, watch out, my friend. You're going to be losing the life if you're not careful. And indeed, the Khan loses his life at the last second, deciding to give up allegiance and instead throws it over. But now, Lenok is left with just a single scout in the base of the enemy as the knight, the final Lancer does go down, but all of a sudden... There is one who remains. A single man. A single sheep. A single beast. That provides information about the wood line. The status of the wood. The location of the villagers. All of those good things. You can see the way that the <laughs> the sheep is moving in. He's actually put it into position here. He's intent on keeping a spy inside the base of Puppy Paw. And Puppy Paw is at none the wiser. Down towards the south we see a an interesting mining camp being placed down here. Outpost going to be coming down. What is Lee not doing with this outpost? He just put it up, got some line of sight, and he's like, yeah, that'll do. As long as I got line of sight, I'm happy. That'll do. That'll do. But now back in the middle of the map, we see Lenok beginning to build up a bit of a mass here. He's got five of these war junks going up against his opponent, who's got five war junks as well. But the fishing economy now, it's looking pretty even. When we come to village account, you can see that Lenok is, or rather Puppy Paw is sitting on 49. Lenok sitting on 53, so pretty even at this point in time. But Lenok beginning to invest heavily in water. We can see the harp, extra ballista upgrade coming in. So going for that, I think it's a swivel? Yeah, swivel ballista. I can fire in any direction and deal 15 damage. Uh, but uh, now at the same time, we've got a bit of a push coming through on this front. Lee not got to be careful. He's, you see him dancing back and forward. They love to dance, these two guys. It's like a, a rap battle, but instead they're dancing back and forward. And now, continuing to spin, continuing to win. We see three junks going down. Lee not going to be sitting here with four. Puppy Paw sitting with five and definitely has the advantage at this stage in the game. Uh, interestingly, we've got a little bit of mist over towards Lenox's side. But other than that, there's no central mist. And I would have loved to have seen that. We do see the... Is that the barrels of beer? What is that? It's, it's definitely something. Night going down to all the villagers. You can see the villagers with their, their daggers out. They were intent on murdering. And yet still, a single 
spy remains. No one expects the sheep. No one expects the spy to be a sheep. Uh, but I, I feel like we're watching Among Us and like he's like, yeah, you know, those, those villagers on the wood line kind of sus, not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me, sheep, you've got a red collar on. There's, uh, there's something that you have to tell us right now. But uh, definitely going to be providing intel about the potential over chop, but uh, very sus, very sus. Uh, but now Men at Arms is going to be coming out for Lenok. He's going to be looking to push back his opponent down towards this forward base that he's managed to establish. More spears beginning to come out. Only Harden. Still no veteran upgrades just yet. Going to be barely tapping away. You can see these guys do 8 damage compared to the Men at Arms that have got 4 armor. At the same time, another push going to be coming through with the Khan. Khan looking to reclaim that sheep. You can see he's very intent on getting that sheep. Lenok says, I'm coming for you, baby. Don't think I left you behind. If you love me, let me go. I don't know if that's a song, but I'm just, I'm going to sing it. And now the sheep, does he somehow manage to make, dude, is he, he's using the line of sight from the sheep to kill the villagers. This is a hundred percent a big brain move coming out from Lee Nock here. Don't do it, Lee Nock. Don't do it, Lee Nock. Don't do it, Lee Nock. He almost does it again, losing his Khan. That could have been huge. That could have been huge. A bit of an overchop also coming through there uh, from Puppy Paw, but now Lee not going to be able to get away with barely a single health. And now in the middle of the map, the real battle begins to unfold. I say the real battle, but at the same time, we've got battles all over this map as the uh, palace guards, or rather the men at arms, deal with the uh, the spearmen and look to try and take out that outpost down towards the south. But now in the middle of the map, the spinning, the winning, it continues. It keeps unfolding now. And we've got ourselves a little bit more action. But I'm, I'm incredibly excited to see that sheep continuing to provide the intel. Actually, it's, it's such a smart move. A single sheep in this situation just does so much work. Uh, you know what? I, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of talking up the sheep. He didn't really do that much. He didn't really do that much, all right? He, he was a bit of a Trojan sheep, but at the same time, you know. Oh, <laughs> did you hear him? He barred at us, dude. He's like, mm, <laughs> he knew we were watching. Oh, God. Now the men at arms going to be uh, taken out here by the Springled emplacement. At the same time, Lenok looking to push upon Puppy Paw. We see a bit of a, a, uh, a flaming, a flaming explosive junk. Going to be careful here. Lenok falls back and manages to take out that explosive junk before any damage gets thrown around his face. At the same time, more and more units being added in at this point by Lenok. We can see that he's still struggling to keep his head above water, though, because more outposts are coming down now. Puppy Paw looking to add in the second or the third outpost in this forward position. At the same time, these war junks doing a great job of just clearing out any potential reinforcements towards this front. And all of the men at arms are going to be looking to take out that villager. Indeed, that villager does go down. More units are coming out. What have we got rallied across here? We've got a single Lancer uh, just sitting here for our Chinese player. And at the same time, more spearmen coming across. They do get taken out. Too many harpoons to the face. And as a consequence, he does die. But now the Barbican going to be what might potentially be the last stand here for Puppy Paw on the ocean. He has a single Knight or a single Lancer inside. That is it. that is his intent. He's going to keep that Lancer inside. He's going to keep it nice and healthy with that. But, uh, but Puppy Paw really starting to suffer. Now we're entering into the cinematic mode as we begin to watch the battle begin to unfold. Looks to be spinning. Not a lot of winning though. Actually, I take that back. He's trying to win, but he's doing it without the spin. And now as a response, Puppy Paw looking to spin back. And now Lee not going to be falling back. He says, I'm not, I'm not keen on spinning. And if I'm not spinning, I'm not winning. So he decides to leave. A smart move coming out from Lenok there. Uh, but speaking of Lee knocked down towards the south, he's managed to secure up this front once again. Uh, Puppy Paw still, uh, still trying his best to get through here, but no villagers going to be coming out. And uh, I mean, you're starting to wonder exactly how Lee going to do it. Blacksmith back here. On the water, he seems to be going even uh, at, at best. Obviously, there's still a Barbican that he's got to contest with. He's managed to take out the second dock from his opponent, but uh, we could potentially see a replacement dock come out. And now Puppy Paw... He's overchopped himself. He exposes himself because not only is he outside his walls, but there is a spy in the ranks. A spy. There are rats in the ranks, ladies and gentlemen, and they go very fluffy in the form of a sheep. And the question is whether that sheep manages to eventually oust some of those villagers. You can see it's still spotting them out as well. So that Khan could be coming back. That was a 165 IQ move right there from Lenok to be leaving that sheep there. He really kept it in position. You saw the way that he moved that sheep initially. It started off over here and he's like, I'm going to move you over here. I'm going to keep you in the wood line. That way no one expects it. And that was exactly what happened. It was the least anybody expected. But now at the same time, Gurgan be going up towards the back line. Lenok heading towards his position. We hear a bit of market trading going on. Lenok trying to reallocate resources. He's got his step right out sitting on the gold mine that's been exhausted so he's going to need to consider moving it separate out it's going to be coming over and indeed it is but at the same time Lenok looking to try and push out of this fortress his enemy has put him in 
And all of a sudden, those spears are going to be coming out, meaning Force Veteran Spearman's doing a great job. Still Hardened Spearman. We see once again a bit of a graphical glitch as a Lee Knock now begins to push upon his enemy. And it's not looking pretty right now for Puppy Paw. He's going to be losing on the first front, losing on the second front. It's not looking pretty right now. Puppy Paw going to have to work in a bit of magic, potentially have to visit the monastery, maybe get a, a, a monk out, maybe do a little bit of praying, a little bit of thoughts. Maybe that'll fix him up. We'll have to see how he looks to play it as the Sprinkled Emplacement going to be going down on this outpost as well. Slowly but steadily taking out more units. You see the Men-at-Arm drop with his shield. But at the same time, Puppy Boar somehow managing to hold out on water. The dock still remains. At the same time, the, uh, the War Junks here still slowly but steadily keeping themselves alive. But beautiful micro coming in once again from Leenok. And we see that Khan is back up. It's going to be moving around the map. And it keep going to be going up right now for Puppy Paw. Puppy Paw is intent on making it count. And finally, we see him really look to commit towards this front. And he says, you know what? I, I'm going to put a keep down. That's what, he <laughs> That's what he says. He says, you know what? I'm going to put a keep down. And he puts a keep down. He was talking to Wham. He's like, hey, I'm going to put a keep down. And Wham's like, you, you do you, brother. If you want to put a keep down, you put the keep down. And they puts the keep down. But now, at the same time, in the middle of the map, the keep's going to be having less to worry about because, well, let's be honest. There's only one war junk that's left, and Puppy Paw is making more, but uh, it's not going to be enough to keep up with his, what is his opponent is investing. In fact, he's investing in fishing boats right now, so he's almost guaranteed to win the water. That's what he thinks. Uh, but now the keep, going to be looking to try and take control of this land, has found the stone outcropping. So going to be looking to gather up the stone that's out here, steal that away, and at the same time, really utilize this uh, this position. But Lenok has now, of course, started work on Traction Trebuchets almost immediately. Uh, so obviously moved his blacksmith over towards this Uvu, uh, and the Uvu went down again. Where where do Lenox Uvus keep going, and why do they keep dying? Lenox literally had an Uvu over here. He moved his blacksmith over here. He researched improved siege engineering. But now... I don't even know where his goddamn Uvu's gone. I shouldn't say goddamn. I know there's going to be a whole bunch of Christians in the chat like, Django, you have turned your back on the Lord. It is time that you, you, you repent. Do not take the Lord's name in vain, uh, because they all seem to be from uh, from Massachusetts. I guess that's where that accent was from. Um, but uh, now at the same time, uh, in the middle of the map, Lee Nock is going to be slowly but steadily uh, moving towards the uh, the victory on the water. But the real question comes down on the, on the opposite front. Oh my lord, he's found a way through the, the, the mass. The war junk manages to get out, do a bit of damage here. Trebuchet is going to be looking to deal some damage. He's got four traction trebuchet, trebuchets rather, out for Lee Nock right now. And uh, we have, we've got ourselves a bit of a problem here because even though Puppy Paw might think that he's got him got, his, got himself ahead on the beach. Oh my god, has Puppy Paw still not got Wheelbarrow? Puppy Paw, we're at 23 minutes. You're playing the Chinese. You're in the Song Dynasty. Where's your mill? Puppy Paw is millless. Oh, he's got a mill. He's still got no wheelbarrow, Puppy Paw. What are you doing to me? I can't believe it. Oh, not like this, Puppy Paw. We're at 22 minutes, still no wheelbarrow. I think Lee Nock got his wheelbarrow at like four minutes. Four, four seconds probably for Lee Nock. Uh, let's have a look and see. What are, what are his villagers carrying? 15. Yeah, Lee, Lee Nock is absolutely fine. Keep is going to be going down. Puppy Paw going to be again struggling on this front once again as the units begin moving forward. Puppy Paw probably going to be throwing away this game, I suspect. I don't think there's any real way that he can make it in, back into this. He's lost on water. He is trying to find a way back in on water. You can see he's got this this uh, war junk out here just dishing out damage non-stop to the fishing boats that are out here. He's going to be trying to uh, to keep his head above water out there. Uh, but at the same time, it definitely seems like he's losing it. And at the same... Whoa, my lord, that Barbican. I mean, he's still got the knight, the Lancer inside. Hey, question. Oh, no, never mind. I answered it. I was going to say, if you kill a Barbican and it's got units inside, do the units die? No, they don't. Uh, but villagers managing to evacuate. You can see them heading towards the next stone mine. A lot of resources in the bank for Puppy Paw at this point in time, but he's going to be losing this position. Probably needs to start thinking about stone walls. And even if he did... There'd be trebuchets coming out from his opponent very, very shortly, or at least moving their way to the front. You could see four trebuchets making their way forward as we witness some of the best blue ribbons that money can buy. Look at that beautiful blue ribbon in the middle of the map. I'm going to zoom in on that. Oh, it doesn't get thicker if you zoom in. It always just stays stagnant. What is it? What are you showing me? Where are you from, blue ribbon? Where, where do you come from? Why do you do that? Are you still in that same spot? Where are you, blue ribbon? I know you're around here somewhere. Lee Nock now looking to push in upon his opponent. The keep going to be going up, but the villager is going to be doubtfully heading back towards his base as unfortunately it looks like they're going to lose their life and getting a little bit confused running around in the wrong direction he looked to put a keep up initially behind this but decided it was probably a little bit too safe and instead goes for a more aggressive keep going to be losing all of the resources that he invested in it and you see all of the resources going to waste right there the trebuchet is unfolding unleashing all hell there and war junk in on the shoreline here a single war junk remains for puppy paw he's trying his best to get back on the open ocean but now we see that lancer is finally free as well as that villager is finally free from the footholds that were put on it by society it, it may live its life 
free on the on the shorelines of of the Boulder Bay, of the Boulder Bay. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, he's going to be a happy camper. Let's just put it that way. But Leenock, speaking of happy campers, take a look at that. Leenock going to the Imperial Age somewhere. There it is. The White Stupid going to be coming down for him. He's got 1,200 stone in the bank. I kind of feel like it's enough stone, Leenock. Maybe you could spend it. Maybe you could spend it, but uh, we'll see how he looks to play it out. And now continues to push forward. He's got a beautiful mass beginning to build here. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see more siege getting thrown down here. He's got enough to, to throw in three mangonels if he wants to. 1,200 uh, is, is more than enough wood uh, to do it. But uh, finally, finally the sheep has been recaptured. Reunited. Reunification. Leenock has taken the first Mongolia and reunited it with the second citizen of Mongolia. Springwood's continuing to fire off. But the, the sheep kind of seems disinterested. I, I believe the sheep has actually got Stockholm Syndrome. It's wearing a red coat, but I feel like it spent so much time with the villagers that it's just like, I'm not even interested in being with you guys anymore. I don't serve you guys anymore. Well, there you guys go. Good game gets called. Leenock victorious. It, it looks like uh, Puppy Paw definitely going to be heading through to game number three. I'm excited to see who wins. I hope you guys are too. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Check out Golden League this weekend.